Welcome back to the county seat. And it happened on the 23rd of December, a Christmas present. Secretary of the Interior Ken Salazar passed order number 3310. It was called the Wildlands Order. The BLM put out this policy and a manual with the determination that local BLM leaders would be able to determine in their future planning and consider wilderness characteristics for land planning. Utah's counties and the state believe that it's an extension of wilderness study areas and wilderness designations that fall outside the purview of Congress. That led to a conflict and it led to Director Abbey coming to Salt Lake City for a meeting. Here with that story is Malia Bascom. I'm Malia Bascom at the county seat. What is wilderness? Well, depends on who you ask. According to the Wilderness Act, it is 5,000 acres of untrammeled land, pristine. So what is wild land? Good question. In the original Wilderness Act of 1964, it states that wilderness is hereby recognized as an area where the earth and community of life are untrammeled by man. In other words, there can be no roads, industry, or anything that impedes the natural state of a wilderness area. Some see this as the most restrictive of land policies, while others embrace it as the only way to protect treasured lands. The 1964 Act gave it the authority of creating wilderness solely to Congress. Now currently, there are about 800,000 acres of wilderness in the state of Utah and about 3.2 million acres of wilderness study areas, or places that may one day be designated and are presently treated as if they were wilderness. Now where do wildlands fit into this wilderness equation? Wildlands is a new category of protected land created in the Department of the Interior Secretarial Order number 3310 that was enacted just before Christmas of 2010. This new policy allows for the BLM to find smaller tracts of land with some of the characteristics of wilderness as defined by the 1964 Act and manage it as if it were wilderness. Estimates of land eligible for this designation run from about 1 million acres to nearly 6 million acres. The proclamation took Utah leaders completely by surprise. We kind of were blindsided and, and, and really not being told up front what was taking place and what was being discussed. And we were not given an opportunity to give input. Uh, and I think that's uh, where I say process counts. You can think what you want about the decision on wild lands. I think most people are admitting that the process really did not measure up to, to true public input. This probably was not handled in exactly the most appropriate way. Aside from the way the order was announced, many question as to whether it was even legal. The legislative power of the United States government should be vested in Congress. When you're making law, you're legislating. That needs to happen through Congress. Long and short of this whole thing is Secretary Salazar and his direction is trying to circumvent the law through regulation. But according to officials at the BLM, the agency is within its scope to proceed based on several sections of the Federal Lands Policy and Management Act and a ruling by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. Section 201, 202, we believe still gives the BLM the direction and the mandate to continue to inventory just as a normal property owner you know, we own property, all of us. We want to know where is our property? What is it that we have? What is it that we own? And so FLIPMA asked the BLM to, on a continual basis, know and do inventories of our lands. Despite the legalities of the issue, many are concerned with is it ethical? And what about the economic impacts for rural Utah, which in fact impacts the entire state? With tourism, ranching, energy extraction, it even impacts our school children. Organizations like the Southern Utah Wilderness Alliance hail the order as a means to set aside the nine million acres proposed in the Red Rock Wilderness Bill. They claim that wilderness designation will bring tourism to the state that will offset any gains made by other users of the land. But Utah Governor Gary Herbert is worried about the other uses of the land that could suffer from too much protection. We need to make some decisions on what we're doing as far as a resource management plan and stick to it and move ahead. But it's the uncertainty that causes the problem. And if there's uncertainty, uh, we all know capital is a coward. If you don't want me around, capital will go someplace else where it's welcome. And they'll go to Texas, they'll go to the Carolinas, you know, they'll go to Oklahoma, they'll go to someplace else, but they won't stay in Utah. What they're doing with this re-inventory 
by making that uncertainty, not only for local governments, but also for businesses that are going to do business in local areas, especially in rural areas, is they have hurt kids in Utah again. They have hurt our ability to fund education. The governor is not going to take this challenge lightly, and while he wants to work with them, he is putting the agency on notice. I've got three arrows in the quiver, I'll use them all. One is negotiation, which we are trying to do all the time, keep good lines of communication, understand, see if we can negotiate settlement and resolution. The second one is legislation. We'll try to legislate and resolve this public land issue once and for all legislatively. But the last one is litigation, and that's an arrow in the quiver that I'm not afraid to use, and we will use it as we see a need and as is appropriate. So no one quite knows what the next step will be, but they all hope that it will move forward to some sort of permanent resolution that we can all live with. For the county seat, I'm Malia Bascom. Thank you, Malia, for that report on the Wildlands Initiative, the secretarial order. We will actually make that the topic of our discussion along with the RS-2477 court case as we return here at the county seat. I will be joined by Commissioners from Kane County, Jim Matson and Doug Heaton, and Mark Ward from the Utah Association of Counties. Stay with us. We'll be right back with the county seat. <laughs>